Hello and welcome back to The Music Room. I'm Duncan Taylor and in this Synergistic Setups video we're going to talk about the mixture of solid state and tube devices in a hi-fi system. Now doing this mixing solid state and tubes, this is one of my favorite uh, ways of dialing in a system and getting the sound that you want. And in this video I'm going to explain why it's great and talk about how to use each in the right position so they're used to their maximum effect. Now we're here in the listening lab at the music room. Um, the gear in here tends to change quite a bit as we're bringing in new products to try out or, uh, or trying new combinations. And uh, I wanted to do something interesting in here. We'd been using the Weiss Engineering DAC 502 as our digital converter and we've been using the Arinder N10 as our source. And those are great. But I wanted to try something uh, where we used um, some tube products with their own DAC stages and uh, had some other ideas based on um, the way the system was coming together. When we brought in these monoblock amplifiers, these huge M8 amplifiers from Michi, uh, got me thinking actually, what if we brought in uh, monoblock preamplifiers to this mix? And uh, you know, you might be thinking, where do those exist? Um, but several companies have been doing that. Past Labs have been doing that for years. Uh, Mark Levinson, years before that. So, um, but these ones are 20 years old and they're chock full of tubes and they're from the legendary hi-fi brand Conrad Johnson. Um, and I'm speaking of course of the ART preamplifier. These are the Series 2 and ART stands for Anniversary Reference Triode. This is a full triode, fully dual mono preamplifier that had a serious following and was a pinnacle piece when it was introduced in the year 2000. Only 250 pairs of these are ever made, and the 10 gold pin 6922 tubes included make up the composite triode circuit that Conrad Johnson developed. Composite triode is a cool approach. It's one of the reasons this preamplifier sounds like nothing except the attached equipment and the music flowing through it. Essentially, each 6922 is a dual triode, so it has two triode sections available. Conrad Johnson wires five of these in parallel, meaning that 10 triode sections are acting as one tube. In most tube circuits, the tube handles the voltage gain, and then there's a, another circuit after that which would handle the current gain. Generally, this is called a buffer, and in some designs it would be accomplished by a solid state device, um, but in some pure tube designs it's also accomplished by something called a cathode follower circuit. Now, in the case of the Conrad Johnsons, when you have the 10 triodes in one approach, uh, that extra stage is not necessary, which means that you get better transparency and better resolution from this device. Now, there's a saying in hi-fi audio that simple circuits distort in simple ways, and that that's more pleasing to the human ear. And this explains a little bit about the, the following behind and the magic of a single-ended triode or SET or, or direct heated triode, DHT, uh, those kind of amplification using tubes. The only problem with a simple triode amplification circuit is the lack of power. And so it generally forces the listener to go find very high efficient speakers to make it all work. Well, these right here are SET preamps and the big Michi M8 monoblocks we've got provide plenty of muscle. So by setting the stage for transparency before the signal is amplified, we're able to retain that SET magic without the need to compromise on the speakers. The ART products from Conrad Johnson represent their all-out assault on audio design. Um, the story goes that they originally made this preamplifier only for their own listening room, uh, with no intention of making it a final product because the cost would just be ridiculous. Um, but years later, their 20th anniversary coming up um, made them realize this could be a great product as a limited edition, pretty expensive uh, preamplifier to kind of show what the company can do. Well, thanks for, to the wild success of that, uh, over the years the company kept adding more all-out assault products to the Anniversary Series line. All right, let's move on to the rest of the system here. In our last video, I talked briefly about the Michi M8 monoblock amps that we recently brought in here, but I wanted to dwell a little bit more on them this time um, because we've been listening to them more and they're just blowing our minds. Um, for anyone who's not aware, the Music Room is new partners with Rotel and Michi, and we now offer 
all of their products on our website. Um, but this is an opportunity for us to get to know what the sound of Michi amplification is like. And uh, really in this room, we've tried a whole bunch of amplification over the last month or two on these Dolly speakers. We've had a Burmester amp, we've had a Dart Zeal amp, we've had a tube amp from our Greek friends, Lab 12, um, and that lovely chord that we've been uh, listening to and featuring in, in a few videos. Um, of, of those, none of those really had the perfect mixture of extreme transparency, extreme musicality, and extreme power that the Michi M8 amplifiers do and uh, it's quickly turned into our favorite combination here. The Michi M8 monoblocks can put out a heart-stopping 1800 watts per channel into 4 ohm speakers and the Dolly speakers being 5 ohms nominally means that we're getting almost all of that in here. The amps have silent fans on the back which will engage when tons of power is being drawn but it's not like the Dolly Epicon 6s are current hungry or insensitive. The M8s are hardly breaking a sweat in this room but the sonic effects of having that much power on hand are still felt and heard. That's because in hi-fi audio, everything matters. Uh, in mono products like these, uh, power supplies don't share any power to another channel. Um, specifically in these amps, the design choices made by the Rotel and Michi crew, uh, component selection and layout, um, the fact that these have 32 transistors on the output, uh, really spreading out the work and allowing for much lower output impedance. Uh, all of these are factors as to why we love the sound of the M Michi M8 so much. Moving on to the source, I brought in two different CD players uh, to test out. Now, one has a tube output stage and one does not. So what I wanted to find out was, uh, would tubes at this position in the system uh, be great or would it be a little bit too much of a tube thing and would I prefer solid state in this uh, situation. I've got a lovely top loading CD player from Italy uh, from the brand Lector. It's the CDP7TL. Uh, it's got an external power supply and it uh, features a pair of output tubes. Um, and then I've also got a CD player from our nearby neighbors Air Acoustics. This is the C5 XEMP and that would be the solid state uh, CD player in the mix. Now wait a minute you say this is a synergistic setups video shouldn't I just pick the best sounding one and just have one source and that was my plan but upon listening to these uh, I really realized that um, they're both excellent players they both don't stray very far from the same standard of fidelity but it's a perspective change that I think is a more personal choice and might have to do with the style of music being played as well. With the Lector in this system, you really get a wide bandwidth, extended and very linear sounding presentation. With the solid state air, you get a little bit more articulation and drive in the mid bass and a touch of warmth to the overall sound. The Lector tossed up a slightly deeper sound stage, but an organic quality to the air was also enticing. This draws a parallel to the entire tubes versus solid state debate. And these types of comments are common across so many of the products out there. While the tube output of the Lector is in the small signal range, so the device doesn't exactly mimic all the strengths and weaknesses of a tube amp, it still sheds some light on what tubes do best. Because a tube's internal elements are separated by just air, or it's a vacuum, so just space, uh, and you contrast that to solid state devices that are just hunks of silicon, uh, the capacitance of a tube is much lower and on a well dialed in system this can absolutely be heard. Then there's a saying in hi-fi audio that there's no free lunch in audio. What this means is that we're often just choosing between two styles of compromises uh, as audiophiles making these choices in our systems. Well, yes, but there are ways that you can assign tasks to either solid state or tube devices to try to make the most of their own strengths electrically and that pays dividends. In this system I'm getting superb control over the Dolly woofers thanks to the mammoth strength of these Michi M8 amps and I'm getting extremely natural high frequency extension and air from the addition of the tube preamp and also the tube CD player. If I want to go a touch more bloomy I'm reaching for the Air CD player. It certainly sounds like I've got the best of both worlds here at my disposal. 
We obviously can't wrap up a synergistic setups video without talking about the speakers. And like I mentioned before, these are the Dolly Epicon 6. That is a, the Danish loudspeaker maker's second from the top of the line. Now according to Dolly, the decision between the 6 or the 8 has more to do with the room size and properly loading that room. And our room being uh, 18 feet wide by 25 feet deep by 10 feet tall, uh, it, according to them, is on the large size for what the uh, Epicon 6 was designed to handle. Now I would love to hear a pair of Epicon 8s in here, um, but I wonder if that opinion about our room might be a little different uh, if they were able to hear what the 1800 watts of hulking muscle uh, per channel can do for these Epicon 6s. We are getting uh, great bass extension in here, a huge wall of sound, and we're not actually pushing the speakers back toward the back wall to give us that boundary reinforcement to help with the bass response at all. Actually, this is a really well-treated room, so we're bringing the speakers out and we're still getting effortless bass with zero compression. We are, however, closely following the company's advice to set the speakers up with no toe-in, i.e. facing straight forward. This means you're listening considerably off axis to the tweeters, which is notable and which I'm going to explain. Speaker drivers change the way that they disperse sound as the frequency rises or as the pitch of the sound goes up. Um, larger drivers have better power handling, but they can tend to get really beamy or almost laser focused at the very top end of their effective range. Now at the bottom end of any driver's effective range, the dispersion tends to be quite wide and the pattern of how it disperses is pretty even. So when designing a crossover, loudspeaker designers need to try to make the dispersion transition from one driver to the next driver be as even as, say, the frequency transition, which is really usually the primary focus of crossover design. Following our best of both worlds theme, Dolly solves the dispersion issues on the high frequency handoff by using a large soft dome tweeter at the bottom end of the treble range and bringing in a vertical ribbon tweeter at the top. A large soft dome will have great power handling, low resonant frequency, and fantastic dispersion in the low treble. A long vertical ribbon will have surprisingly wide dispersion at the very top frequencies where it comes into play. Since the dome tweeter is not rolled off when the ribbon comes in, but rather runs all the way up, if you do listen to these speakers on axis, you'll be hearing the beaming characteristic of the large dome at high frequencies. If, however, you listen off-axis, as recommended, you'll hear a natural transition from the large dome to the ribbon, with the dispersion remaining constant and even all the way up. These dollies are great at the top end, and they're exactly the kind of speaker you want to show off the natural linearity up there that the addition of tubes in a system can bring. I didn't even get into the woofer's innovations, like the SMC magnet structure which fights hysteresis distortion, uh, the multiple magnetic field shaping rings which cause a complete lack of harsh sounding odd order distortion products and many more items uh, involving the woofers. This system is vivid, organic, expressive and highly resolving. It's a mix of new stuff and old stuff showing again that in hi-fi audio age can just be a number and it's really the design choices and execution that should inform your quest for synergy. There's no free lunch in audio but in many places, you can uh, find ways to get the best of both worlds. Well, that's it for this Synergistic Setups video. For The Music Room, I'm Duncan Taylor, recommending Tubes in Solid State and wishing you happy listening. Mm -hmm.